Praise the Lord. <clears throat> it is really early in the morning, so I'm going to have to keep my uh, voice down a bit. It's like uh, 4.52. <laughs> Praise God. Uh, Lord willing, amen, Jesus. I, in the next few days, between now and no later than the 4th of, what is it, August coming up now, we'll be back in my own apartment upstairs and start to be able to use my little board, you know, to give illustrations of things that I'm trying to share with you. I, I, I really think that, uh, and I, I've mentioned this before, that for myself anyway, there's been a real connection, okay, not only to what was going to take place with the body of Christ as a forerunner, all right, son, but also in the likeness and image of the only begotten son. Many people want to confuse that with what I'm saying, okay. <laughs> he was the first and only begotten son. Yeah, he's the establisher of our faith. By his blood, okay, we receive salvation by faith through the blood of Jesus Christ. But he was the first of many sons and daughters who would come. Among the many sons and daughters to whom were to come, I believe I've been called as a forerunner to that group of stones being gathered together at this hour. And I believe scripture upholds what I'm referring to as being a forerunner to that which would begin to take place for the sons and daughters of God. That one would come prior to that work beginning to take place. That being what it is, there's also been this connection, as I've mentioned before, to the elect, natural Israel. So that the two men, natural and spiritual, okay, two feet, east and west, are being joined together in a more or less a parallel period of time of which events begin to establish themselves for both the elect, East, natural Israel, and the election of grace, West, spiritual Israel. That joining together, the two branches, the two twigs, two sticks, represent the two legs, and the two feet of Jesus standing upon the Mount of Olives, with one foot in the east, natural Israel, the remnant, and one foot in the west, the spiritual body of Christ, the bride, sons and daughters of God. That being what it is, and I've also mentioned to you that as the time comes closer, that the unity and our being made one with one another in Christ is also coming together. And that coming together among the sons and daughters is upon the top of Mount Zion, which then, as a group of people gathered together, represent heavenly Jerusalem of whom gives birth to the man-child, which is as the sons and daughters and or the wine and oil coming down the anointing, the blood testimony from Mount Zion. That is heavenly Jerusalem coming down, of which the wheat will begin to be gathered into 
Now it's also the temple because it's the body collectively, which is also as the barn or the wedding feast. The banquet hall is <laughs> where you have a wedding feast at. So some people confuse, get, I don't know how, but they get lost in the idea that, well, is, does that mean the wedding feast? Well, yes, it means two wedding feasts because you have a wedding feast in a banquet hall. The banquet hall is the same as the barn of which the wheat are gathered into. So they're all, in, in, and each of it represents the body of Christ. Okay? <laughs> all right. So the reason I mention that is because of what's taking place in natural Israel right now relative to what's been taking place with me. Okay, so how the enemy has come in for her, Hamas, has increased their activity of attack, as with me, and my being placed out of this apartment, okay, to me, it's just God positioning the enemy, allowing the enemy to be positioned, and the elect and the election of grace that they might be in position that God might move upon the world at the time of the Feast of the Trumpets this year for the body of Christ, the sons and daughters, to begin to place their enemies spiritually under their feet in the West as natural Israel, of whom God is protecting at this hour so many may not understand what I'm saying, and many may have contradictory, contradictory attitudes towards Israel as a nation. I want you to understand what God is doing for natural Israel right now is for the sake of the elect, the remnant, in and among natural Israel as a nation. Okay? So don't get confused. Alright? Uh, <laughs> Jesus. If they still have to, the remnant has to repent and enter into the new covenant through the blood of Jesus Christ, of which by the, their eyes are opened that they might see the truth. Amen. But their eyes opening and the awakening of the wheat, which is the receiving of the baptism of the Holy Spirit, that up until now, until the day of redemption, they had only been sealed with the promise of that redemption. That redemption takes place at the time of the baptism of the Holy Spirit. That's why they say it's by the washing of the water of the Word of God, the cleansing. When the Holy Spirit cleanses you spiritually with the water of the Word of God, it regenerates Washing and regeneration of the soul. That is the redemption of the soul. So for many of us, by faith, believing in the baptism of the Holy Spirit is what has allowed that redemption to take place right from the beginning of the time of them whom by faith were able to receive okay, the baptism of the Holy Spirit. They have entered into the inner court or the temple or the body of Christ. Alright? Their souls have been redeemed. <laughs> but the vast majority of the general body of the wheat, the sheep, because you got sheep and you got shepherds, all right? They are still in the outer court, waiting upon that promise, which is the awakening that's getting ready to take place. That's why there's a commotion in the marketplace. Marketplace are the households of faith. That's what's getting ready to take place. And this is also part of the judgments. But it's also connected to what's taking place in natural Israel and her awakening. All right? So, at least for the remnant. That being what it is, I now view this attack of the enemy in line with the Father because it has not moved me from this apartment complex. Amen, Jesus. Okay? It has simply placed the enemy in position that the father would have them in and the sons and daughters as well as the remnant in the position that the father would have them at and I relate that to the upper room and I mentioned that to you before that going up to the second floor 
okay? This has the upper room. All right? In the upper room, there are those, or the inner court, who enter in through the veil of flesh, through the crucifying of their flesh, all right? They enter in to the Holy of Holies. It's from the Holy of Holies, of which the, th the throne of God is at, that the oil, anointing, comes forth, all right? And it comes upon the sons and daughters of God, which are the lamps, okay? The oil in the lamp, <laughs> all right? So, I, I, I want to help you to see something here that the Lord has uh, shared with me regarding the spoken word. Now, a lot of people have been sharing. Uh, my uh, my sister, uh, Nancy Tibbetts, has tried, and I understand more as I, as I listen to her and, and uh, what the Father is saying, more about how important, and others have mentioned, my brother sits at Believer, okay, in the spoken word relative to the leading of the Holy Spirit, which is connected to what the Father said. He said, concern yourself not about what you should say, for in that hour I shall speak through you. That's the spoken word of which I believe Sister Nancy Tibbetts and my brother, sister, believer, are referring to that if you were in a card game, it would trump the literal word. And in a sense, it does. But it must be based upon the foundation, okay? Or it's not God. So I believe, yes, it is the blood testimony coming forth. Yes, it is the anointed word of God coming forth. Yes, it is God speaking through us at this hour, all right? And many will fail to receive it by faith. That's what Jesus was talking about when he made reference to the Son of Man. Because the Son of Man is what? The spoken, prophetic word of God, okay? And even more so now, that as the Father, as we speak, the Father is speaking through us. The rivers of pure water, the waters coming forth, the voice, one voice of many waters coming forth, which is what brings us together in that unity in the body of Christ, that we might be made one with one another and with the Father and the Son. So, we're real close here, I believe. And sometime after August, I believe we're going to be coming into the Feast of Trumpets sometime in September, I believe, maybe October, somewhere along there. I firmly and completely believe that without a doubt, all-out war regarding the neighbors surrounding natural Jerusalem and our enemies going to begin to take place, of which they, in natural Israel, will place her enemies under her feet, and we, spiritually, will place our enemies, powers and principalities, under our feet. That anointing will begin to start to come forth as the sons and daughters are gathered together on Mount Zion, and heavenly Jerusalem comes down. Now, I told you there may be a three-year period before that actually takes place. I'm not real certain. <laughs> it seems to me that that trumpet, okay, of sending forth the angels to the four corners of the earth to gather them together, that, without a doubt, to me, by faith, begins to take place. This Feast of Trumpets. And as I've mentioned before, it as the last three and a half years of the Messiah's week that was cut short. Many of you don't want to accept that. And many uh, in the cardinal teachers, uh, this is another one of what they have deceived you by. Okay? When someone has something cut short, you have to listen to it and read it the way it's written 
and interpret and understand it in the general understanding of what it means, okay, this is logic and reason, okay, of what it would mean to you and I, right here, right now. So if I get cut short, it means there's more that I wanted to say, more that would do the finished work or complete the work of faith, of which is the removing of the spots and wrinkles, okay, the finished work, all right, more, but I was cut short before I could finish it. In the natural realm, he was cut short, but in the resurrection, he is what? The anointed word of God. So as the Son of Man, the anointed word, the spoken word, which will be placed on the revelation, the revealed word of the Father, which is him speaking through us, okay, is that apocalypse, the unveiling, which is also what? The light that shines forth in a dark and gloomy period of time. That's why the actual event of the sons and daughters coming forth may may be a couple, two, three years down the road. In in the sense of the wheat, because you see, they've got to be prepared. The the period of time of the warning to flee out from among them, the exposing of the nakedness of the whore. Uh, the awakening of the wheat so they can see it and hear it and understand the truth and know okay that they need to flee out all of these events need to take place long before many of you who are looking to have a rapture take place now have no idea what you're even talking about you have no understanding of what has been written in the Word of God that shows us the period or uh, the events that take place during this period of time regarding the awakening and the commotion in the marketplace. Okay, all of these things have to take place first. All right? So there's this period of turmoil coming, which is that darkness and a dark and gloomy day that the light shines forth from. So we've got to get into the dark and gloomy day, which is just now beginning to come upon us. Okay? And it's going to increase in its darkness. All right? economic collapse. I mean, things are getting ready to go to you know where, literally speaking. That's going to be that dark and gloomy day. So when the man-child ministry actually begins to come forth, okay, so that the wheat might enter in, it may yet still be a period of time. It may be that after that first three years. And then, like I said, there's another three years okay, of our gathering in. Because you got to look at these relative to what takes place in the natural for natural Israel. Alright? So, and I've shared this before, and uh, I'll share it again regarding the rebuilding of their temple, as it is the gathering together in the body of Christ for us, which is the barn, alright? And they do it during a turbulent period of time, which I believe tribulation begins, and we're here as the gathering starts to take place, tribulation begins. So, you're shortly after the two or three year period that's coming right now, which is the call to repentance, prior to tribulation, of which we are being saved out, delivered from, by entering in to that barn under the anointed word by faith. All right, shall I find faith when I return? spoken word, the anointed word, the Father speaking through in the Revelation, the Apocalypse, the light shining forth in the darkness. Okay, During that tribulation period of time, they're gathered in to be saved out from that which the world is about to go through. So although we're there at the beginning, okay, so that the darkness and the gloominess is seen by all, and the warning has gone forth, the actual turbulent times, I believe, don't happen for until the signing of the peace treaty. And actually, just about six months. I told you there's about a six-month overlap in each one of these three-year periods, which make up the 14 days, or I see them as 14 years, beginning at the Feast of Trumpets, from 
Feast of Trumpets to uh, the Feast of Tabernacles. We have the first ten days, which I liken on to the blood upon the doorpost, which Israel, in the natural, in her exodus, was saved out from what came upon the world, Egypt, around her, even though she was right there. I believe it's the same thing. That our, the wheat entering into this ark, in, into the repenting and coming out, and then entering in, is as the blood upon the doorpost, or the exodus, spiritually, which we are gathered into that barn and taken to that secret place, which I've mentioned to you before, I believe is the third heaven. We may be right here, because the word says, though 10,000 fall to the right and a 1,000 to the left, not one hair on your head shall be harmed. And it also goes on to say that the Father prepares a feast for us from before our enemies. In other words, our enemies are around us, but we're entering into this apocalypse, revealing, feeding, feast of love in the revelation, all right, in that light, with the enemy all around us. Now, is there a period during the uh, time of which the wrath of God comes on? Yes, because by that time, I believe natural Israel, the remnant, has also come in under the anointing. Their eyes have been opened, the revelation. They've repented, and the blood of Christ is upon them. Okay, so that they may suffer the fullness of the tribulation, but they do not suffer the wrath and judgments of God. They're saved out of that. We're saved out of the tribulation, okay, not the darkness, but the actual beginning of the tribulations. From the tribulations, by being under that anointing, entering into that barn, all right, just as they then are saved out from the judgments, the wrath of God. And both of those, tribulation and the judgments of God, are the two portions, the double portion, that's given to the harlot and whore church. Tribulation she suffers, so those that might repent, might repent. And then if they don't, here comes uh, the remnant, second set of footmen, for them who did not repent, <laughs> all right, are given that second opportunity, a last chance, to get in under the anointing of the remnant, that hour, that's a worldwide evangelical movement, all right, to be saved out of the wrath and judgment of God that's about to come, which is the second portion upon the whore and the harlot. So we've got a whole lot of things getting ready to begin to take place. I believe this Feast of Trumpets, and that we are in the, the coming the Feast of Trumpets, we enter into the weeks of days, or weeks of years. There's only one week, seven year period, that's left for Daniel's fulfilling. But there's also, prior to that, okay, the fulfilling of the finished work of faith among the body three-and-a-half-year period for the lighting of the last three candles, which begins in the fall festivals. So, amen, Jesus. Keep your eyes upon that mountain, amen, just where which salvation comes forth. Amen? And don't have your eyes on the world or anything else going around you. Don't focus on that. Don't pay attention. Hold on to that anchor of your soul, your faith and the Word of God, and the anointing and the promises of God. And you'll be all right. Amen, Jesus. Well, the Lord bless you and keep you in Yeshua's name. Lord willing, pretty soon I'll be back in my home. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Amen.